Hey, PNB world. We are back. And my mission is to make sure that I help people do things, whatever it is in life that they want, confidently and with a plan so that you can make more money, have more free time, and less stress. How's that sound? I appreciate you. If you would, take two seconds and give us a review on the platform that you're listening, if it is available. We are having another break the glass ceiling moment, and we are on the verge of something big here. If we can just get a few good five-star reviews, we would greatly appreciate it. And we're off. You're listening to the Productive Not Busy Podcast, where our mission is to make you more money so you'll have less stress and more free time. It's all about mindset, attitude, and taking action. And your host, Wayne Weathersby, knows how to make that happen. He's negotiated and closed over $150 million in contracts while building businesses with proven success strategies that he wants to share with you. So if you're ready to make some real money, then let's get to it. Here's Coach Wayne. Okay, today is the day that you're going to stop living life as a victim. Interesting subject. Kind of overlooking some of the folks that I help and looking at some of the stuff that I go through on a daily basis as a coach. And all of us sometimes have this little bit of victim mentality. So some of the stuff that we're going to talk today is, you know, what does it mean to live like a victim? What do your actions and inactions illustrate your life approach and and your sense of self? Lots of cool stuff. Then we're going to talk about 10 books that can inspire you to become a survivor from whatever it is that you're a victim of. So I'm going to ask you a question. Do you often find yourself feeling that the world is against you and it's preventing you from living the life or getting what you want? If so, this podcast might be the push you require to redirect yourself toward a more peaceful and happier existence. That's what I'm about. I want everybody to be happy, successful, healthy. Be awesome. Understanding what it means to be a victim can be the first step, though, to changing that and drastically altering your life. Identifying lifestyle choices that prevent you from moving ahead in life can also help. Getting in touch with how you feel and why you will clarify the reasons your life is progressing the way it is. It will also help determine where you could go or where you'll be heading in the future. So in particular, your childhood experiences and past missteps can really complicate your emotional life, trigger all kinds of goofy-ass feelings of negativity and helplessness during your adult years. So those feelings can eat away at you. At the very foundation of your sense of self. And then what does it do? It incapacitates your ability to leave the life that you want. How how you react or respond to challenging situations also reveals a lot about the manner in which you live your life now. Do you live it with responsibility and courage or disdain and self-doubt? Now, the good news is is that you possess the power to alter your path. You no longer have to be a victim. You can survive whatever you've been through and live to see more awesome, beautiful, wonderful days. This guide will tell you how to change from victim into a survivor. So what does it mean to live like a victim. Okay, so according to the dictionary, a victim is described as someone who is unfortunate and who suffers from adverse circumstances. If you take the role of a victim in life, you may commonly assume that situations will get negative results. Consider the following points to determine if you might be living life as a victim. Some people don't know. 
See, number one, your thoughts are affected. The consistent pattern of negative thinking follows you everywhere you go. It's not unusual for you to think others have it out for you. Everybody's out to get you. You go around asking yourself why a lot. Why does everything in my life have to be a challenge? Why can't everyone just leave me alone? Why do others constantly demand, dem make demands of me? Why doesn't anyone understand me? Rather than look for solutions and consider, to consider ways for you to change this poor me attitude. Nothing in life ever works out. Sometimes you're, you know, you may come across as whiny. This type of thinking wastes a lot of your precious time and a lot of other people's time. See, your feelings tell the tale. Do you walk around feeling like you're less important or not as smart as other people? Feeling like your damaged goods has probably kept you in the dark, in the corner. It's likely your self-esteem is pretty low as well, right? Anger and resentment have some comfortable spots for you. You've become comfortable in that space. In fact, you experience these feelings on a regular basis, probably. You're this person. You resent your neighbor who won $7,000 in the lottery. She already has a car. She already has great clothes, a respectful job. She doesn't deserve that. Are you that person? Or, as usual, the good stuff opens to other people and the bad stuff always happens to me. How about that one? Are you the person that you look around and feel jealous and envious of all other people? Most of us have experienced some type of jealousy or envy at some point in our lives, of course. Perhaps you wish that you could live in that house across the street. It disappoints you to think that the Smiths get to pull into that driveway each day, walk through that freaking awesome front door, and live in a place that you covet. Or do you go around blaming yourself when things go differently than you had hoped? When others mistreat you, some, something tells you that it's because of something you did or that's just the way it is. You blame all the other folks for challenging situations in your life. Everyone faces difficult situations. The challenge is to accept responsibility and avoid blaming others. It's about time to abandon the mindset that when others do behavior A, you have no choice but to do behavior B. Feeling helpless is a way of life for these people. Perhaps you tend to watch what goes around. What goes on around you as if you're uninvolved. Things just freaking happen. The world seems like a cold, unsupportive, they-hate-me place. You may actually falsely believe that you're unable to do anything that will actually change your situation or better your life. It's always up to somebody else. So is if helplessness, the overriding emotion in your life, envy, if some of these points describe you, it's likely that you feel like a victim. But your thoughts and feelings aren't the only signs. So now, in this podcast, we're going to explore additional signals that may indicate you're living life as a victim. Your actions and your inactions illustrate your life approach and sense of self. How do you behave at home and work? What about in relationships and social situations? Your behavior in various settings and situations, often demonstrates to others how you feel about yourself. Does your behavior indicate that you've assumed the role of victim? Remember the old adage, it's like when you drink, it, it magnifies what you really are. So if you're a lovey-dovey person, you get all lovey-dovey. But if you're an a-hole for real, it makes you a bigger a-hole. So I want you to examine a few actions to decide if you're living life as a victim. So at home, let's say you waste time. 
As soon as you hit the door, you immediately go sit in your cushy chair, even after dinner's done or when the weekend is here. You decide to ignore stuff that you should be doing and you just because you don't feel like it. You'd rather be sitting on the sofa, sitting in somewhere doing something fun that doesn't involve something that you should be doing. The hard days you've recently you've had recently hold you back from creating the life that you want, really. You have a valid excuse to do nothing. Or so you think. The hours, days, months, and even years fly by and you still haven't completed your home improvement job, your yard work, your to-do list, the honey-do list. You avoid social situations. This is another one. Meeting new people makes you anxious or you feel unsure about what to do when you, when you speak in a group or, or in a group of people. Everybody else seems to, you know, look better, feel better, have more money, or they're just all a-holes. Everybody's a jerk. Everybody lives a more fulfilling life than you. See, or at work, you may stay in the background. You feel like nothing positive ever happens to you regarding your job, or you never get the praise that you deserve. You believe that if you do the bare minimum, that's just good enough. And then when things get tough, it's on everybody else. Is getting by and just collecting a paycheck your mantra, maybe? Hey, another thing is you could fade into the background when you're in social situations. The goal is to be, you know, to avoid being noticed. You prefer to keep from becoming involved with others in any significant or meaningful way. For example, if you end up maybe attending the office party, you stick out in an area where there's a, maybe a one or two coworkers that you're comfortable with and you stay there the whole time. See, in relationships, you avoid speaking up. This is another one. Sharing your real feelings scares you. You feel like you say, you know, what you say isn't important enough or you want to avoid making your partner feel good. Going along and getting along is your, mon- is your motto. Just whatever. Everything's your way. Even if you're physically or emotionally abused, you stay. When you're in a relationship, you remind yourself that you've been abused before and that others are rarely kind to you. So why expect anything different, right? The helplessness is your anchor in, in any relationship. See, your inactions, as well as your actions, signal how you feel about yourself. When you believe that the world happens, you know, what, whatever happens in the world happens to you and you're powerless, then we're probably living as a victim. A lot of people talk about historical wrongs, things that happen to you that make you suffer. We all emerge from the cocoon of our past at some point, and our sense of self formed from early experiences are there. Those experiences anchor us. Our identities are attached to those memories and happenings. If you're stuck in a victim role, you're likely suffering with memories of past experiences that are scary, hurtful, or negative. You've been marked in some way with a terrible internal scar. So I want you to examine these points to help you figure out whether you've been psychologically damaged by early life. Some of us have. Thoughts of past abuse haunt you, maybe. Your childhood may have been pretty rough. Your adults were physically or emotionally abusive. You frequently find yourself thinking about these circumstances. Or you feel wrong by prior events. Even your family members disagree with your, in, in, you know, your interpretation of the events from your childhood. You still feel like you were damaged by that situation. Where you often wish that your past could have been different. That's a that's a big one that I see. You wish you you know your parents had had money with you know all the goodness. I see that a lot, especially in the situation I'm in with my mom, where she's about to pass away. My 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 folks lived the way they wanted to live, so there's not going to be a lot left behind for us, you know, the spoils to enjoy. And I hear a lot of people say that, geez, you know, that person, you know, his dad passed away and left him a million dollars. Well, it happens. What are you going to do about it? Maybe go out and make a million dollars so you can leave it to your kids. Something. There's also the why question. Why did these things happen to you? Faulty beliefs result. 
because your past was so difficult, you may think that it's impossible to live a happy life. You believe that you've been tainted and you see no possibility for living a joyful, stable existence. Psychology is an interesting subject. I love reading on it because, you know, I always wondered why people would go to a psychologist or, or, or have therapy because those people help you fix yourself. They're not reaching inside your brain and pulling your brain out and putting a new one in. They're helping you rewire. Those old tapes filled with negativity are playing over and over and over in your head. And it's, and, and you won't amount to anything if you continue to listen to those. Right? If you're driven by your leftover emotions from the troubling events, these messages keep repeating themselves in your head over and over and over and over, and they get exhaustive and heavy. You're burdened by the old baggage from your past. So historical experiences of neglect, abuse, and abandonment can lead you to develop an overall view of life that can cause you to live life as a victim. I get it. Your vulnerabilities may be exposed and you may kind of feel hopeless about the future, but it's time to get a grip on things. And you can find the power to put yourself on a more hopeful path if you choose to do so. Right? You can change your script, man. You can change the script of life anytime that you want. Because see, being a victim of something means it happened in the past. It doesn't mean it's happening right at the moment. It could be. But that's where the bridge happens. That's where you got to make it happen. You can take actions and change things so that no longer will we hear those old tapes playing in your head. It's up to you to initiate self-corrective measures so that you can alter your outlook on life and change your opinions of yourself. Put the idea, put, you know, I've got some ideas that I started when I was reading these books. I'm an avid, like, I got to know stuff. I got to understand stuff. So I put these ideas into action, plans, and I'm sharing them with you. Right. So based off of some of these flipping the script from victim to survivor, here's what these people did. You know, you you open your mind. You can change anything in your life that you choose to. Even by taking little tiny steps, you can head down a different path. It's like when I talk about people losing weight or gaining weight. If you're going to gain 30 pounds, right, in 10 weeks, just worry about gaining those three pounds a week. Three pounds a week, not the 30 pounds overall, but three pounds a week. Give yourself micro steps, micro bites that you can plant your flag in and you can do the same thing with your victim mentality. Find your confidence. That's the first step. You made it this far. Reflect on the positive things that you've achieved. Listing them in a line on a piece of paper will help you become more self-assured that you've done some good shit. Isn't it time for you to acknowledge that you've made some decent choices along the way? Not everything you've done has sucked. Make the decision to show your confidence to others. Although that work project has stumped a couple of people that I've seen. They know exactly what you do with it and how to tackle the troublesome parts of it. Just look in the mirror. Step up and offer your help. Offer yourself help. Step up and offer yourself help. Showing some self-assurance can be very scary, but you can do it, I promise. You got to think positive. Refuse to allow the old tapes from the past to keep playing in your head. Replace them with something positive. Instead of, oh, I won't amount to anything because of my past. Think, what the hell? I survived my past, so fuck, if I can do that, I can achieve anything I put my mind to. Create an image in your mind of you burning all that shit. Burning old photographs, old memories, old messages. And then regardless of what you're doing, make every effort to finish the task. Use your calendar and prove to yourself that you can complete something that you begin. 
Schedule time to finish particular things in your life. You'll feel uplifted when you see that you finished what you started. The micro goals, the micro bites, three pounds a week. Take responsibility of your own life. No one can make you feel a certain way or carry out a particular behavior unless you let them do that. You can do whatever you want. Create a happy life for you. One action at a time. Do you. Avoid blaming others for how you and your life go. Right? Maybe your parents sucked. I don't know. Maybe your parents lacked nurturing skills or were even maybe abusive, maybe verbally, physically. But you're in charge now. You're an independent adult who can make steps to ensure that you're safe and not like that. Make your choices. Don't let their choices continue to steer your ship. Love yourself. Start right this second. Right now. When you decide to love and cherish you, you can focus more intentionally on your needs. Loving yourself will always help you realize that you're worth the time and effort it takes to construct a life that you want. Create a short motivational sentence that you can say to yourself that will help you become a survivor or take you down a better road. Consider, you know, some of these. I just wrote these down. No excuses. I create the life I want. Number one. Number two, I can do whatever the hell I want. Number three, I'm a survivor. Whatever your mantra is, say it to yourself several times a morning while you're taking a shower. Say it over and over and over while you're in the shower. Say it over and over and over in your head while you're brushing your teeth. You're doing that anyway, so just tag this in there. That's your trigger. Place this in writing on your refrigerator, on your bathroom mirror. Pretend you're an artist. Paint the words of your saying and frame it for a special place in your house. Telling yourself you can do something builds up your energy so that you can accomplish it. Don't leave it up to somebody else. You'll be disappointed. You might find it's helpful to adopt your own special anthem, maybe. Choose an anthem, a a song from the past that energizes you and reminds you that you can make it, that you can do this. Choose a song that speaks to you and carries an uplifting message. The point of having an anthem is that whenever your thoughts are starting to back toward a negative place, you can sing it or you can pop it in a CD player, something, and it turns your thoughts around. To trigger. Remind yourself about what is is and isn't in your control. It's helpful to realize that you're unable to control everything. You can't control what others do, but you can control your emotional and your behavioral reactions to what others do. Remember, 100% of the time you have a ton of options in life. Allow yourself some time to consider them whenever a tough situation comes up. Next time, keep a journal. When you write down your thoughts and feelings, it provides insight about what's driving you. Only then can you figure out how you change your life. Journal daily if you have to. At first, get a comfortable and established area and habit of looking within yourself and writing it down. Now, this one kind of could be hard, right? I want you to share some genuine feelings when it's appropriate. Recognize that someone who cares about you is interested in hearing about how you really feel. If you're unsure if your partner wants to know how you truly feel, talk to them about it first. Let them know that you plan to verbally share your feelings more often because you need help. Ask them to listen and make an effort to understand you. Listen to learn and not to respond. You'll want to mention that you'll pay attention to their thoughts and feelings and words as well. You'll reciprocate it, and you'll be surprised how that works. Ask those who trust, who you trust, really, for some feedback, man. Inquire about what others have noticed that your emotions have done to you and how how they see you. And then listen. Listen to learn, not to respond. Any clues to how you're coming across to others? The feedback from others can help you figure out how you can alter your path to one that's more positive and hopeful. And people actually want to be around you and don't think you're an a-hole. 
want you to tell yourself it's okay to experience some discomfort. When you leave a predictable or uncomfortable place, physically or emotionally, it can be scary and intimidating. Really, I'm sure. I've done it. It sucks. Making changes takes some effort. But it'll be worth it eventually. It's always worth the initial discomfort. And then you got to focus, 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 focus. When you stay centered on your options, choices, emotions, and behaviors, you'll find that life gets a whole hell of a lot easier. When we remind ourselves to stay personally centered, we, you know, we relieve ourselves of the need to control others, right? Earn their permission or seek their approval, right? Listen to that. When we stay centered, we relieve ourselves of the need to control others, to earn their permission or seek their approval. Keep your focus where it counts. Keep your focus on you. Hold yourself to the same high standards that you hold everybody else around. And then last, like I always say, and reading some of these books, you know, I wasn't educated on psychology and psychologists and why people get therapy. You know, started with reading a book about a NASCAR driver who struggled with depression for years and didn't know it until he got professional help by meeting a fan who was a psychologist and they struck up a conversation. So, you know, consider seeking professional help. Depending on your situation, you may have a lot of personal work to do. You have the options to work on these things through your own attendance. You know, attend therapy, attend, attend, see a psychologist, attend support groups, find a therapy group, locate a therapist or counselor to assist you. See, sorting out the details of your life and determining how to make changes will help you live a more conscious and fulfilling existence. Right? The, the NASCAR driver I was talking about said that he lost his compass. He lost his compass and couldn't find his true north. Right? His true north was him. He was worried about all of the other people, making everybody else happy. And if he didn't win, it was somebody else's fault. Anyway, use these tools to help you build a stronger sense of self and discover your desired path in life. Commit to and apply some of the stuff that you hear on my podcast today in your daily life. I just want to help. I want to make you feel better and unleash the badass that's inside of you. See, being a survivor doesn't mean being strong. It's telling people that you need a meal or a ride, a company, whatever. It's paying attention to heart, wisdom, feeling. Not living a role, but having a unique, authentic life. Having something to contribute, finding time to love and laugh. All of these things are qualities of survivors. I told you I was going to give you a list. I told you I'm a reader. I research. So I'm fixing to give you 10 books that can inspire you to become a survivor. Okay. Now we're going to go on to the next episode. You can find out the 10 books that can inspire you to become a better person, a survivor, and a badass. See you soon. You've been listening to the Productive Not Busy Podcast with Coach Wayne. Join us next time for more money-making strategies to help you have less stress and more free time. Follow us on Facebook at Productive Not Busy, on Instagram at Frontline.Coach.Wayne, and on Twitter at Wayne New Jr. And remember, be productive, not busy.